Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. They have solutions for connecting wires to other wires, terminals, or anything else you can think of. There will be a short video explaining more about them at the end. Now enjoy our regular video. Hey, what's happening guys? Today I'm just taking a quick look at this circuit simulation software. Uh, it's from Falstad.com. And I'll put a link to it down below. I mean, you can obviously see what it is. I know you can't see that up there. Okay. I'll put a link to it down below. It is uh, www.falstad.com slash circuit slash circuit js dot html. And what this is, as you can see here, is a Java-based um, circuit simulator. If you look here, a little tank circuit going on. If we click on these, yeah, we can change their resistance. Say uh, 220 ohm. And by changing their resistance, you know, we've changed the circuit and look what's happened here. That's all very nice. See, we've, we've completely screwed everything up here. So let's take this back. Go back to 10 ohms. run yeah I don't know I messed something up it doesn't seem to want to work now but um, hey Paul maybe if you close the switch and open the switch huh there we go then it would work kind of genius <laughs> anyway this is a free Java based circuit simulator and it is extremely cool here is our new blank circuit and you see here we can go draw what do we want to draw? Well, let's see. What do we got? Analog and hybrid. Ooh, we got a 555 timer. Digital chips. Cool. Logic gates. Active building blocks. Okay. So, active building blocks. Op amp. We can draw an op amp. Very cool. Now, let's see. Inputs voltage two terminal would that be a would that be a battery? It would. Okay, so there's a battery. Do some resistors. And let's see if we can hook some stuff up here. We'll go here to here. Oh, yeah. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? There you go. Got to get my, my line straight. You know how that goes. This is, inter this is an interesting little program. I can't believe I've never come across this before. If any of you guys have, you know, uh, definitely let me know. Okay. Why'd that go red there? It definitely did not like that. We have to change this, how I draw this. Come here. Yeah, I bet you this is how you have to do it. That's not a problem. There, now that looks like a better connection. Okay. I'm making a voltage follower if you haven't figured it out yet. Okay, make it uh, 470 kilo ohms. And then we need to draw need a ground.
Then we'll need our wire to connect up to here. And we'll see what will happen. Nothing. Why not? Okay, I redrew it and now it works and I have absolutely no idea why it worked this time and it didn't last time. There must have been something in the way I drew it. But I mean, we, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's see what other controls, scopes, options. Like I said, I just came across this and to be honest with you, I was struggling for something to come up with for a video. So I thought maybe I see what we got going on. Now here, for instance, is a uh, more interesting, more, a little more complicated circuit. This is a uh, Butterworth filter. You can see it uh, made up a number of pie filters put together. But oh, you can't see what I'm doing. If you look down here, you can see it stopped. So this is very cool. This is one of the examples they put here. And you, you can see how everything in this Butterworth filter is um, frequency. Here, for instance, is a full, full wave rectifier with a filter. If you look over here on the scope output at the left, you see the sine wave. If you look over here, you see the filtered uh, close to DC output. Very cool. So as you can see here, you can get pretty involved with this. I don't know uh, exactly everything you can do because like I said, I just came across this and I thought, man, this is so cool. I got to share it with you guys because, you know, first of all, it's free. Second of all, it's cool. And it will uh, definitely feed your need to uh, design little circuits like this anytime uh, that you want. Let's see what else I can find, huh? Well, I've been playing for another 40 minutes or so, and I have just found numerous cool circuits like this on here. So, again, falstad.com. I urge you to check it out, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. I mean, if you're anything like me and into electronics, then you're definitely going to enjoy it. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace. We've all been there, right? We've all spliced a set of wires together and either used some electrical tape or a wire nut or something to connect them together. There's always a better way. If you need them permanently connected, I suggest the solder stick, uh, solder connectors where you heat them up with a heat gun and they melt together. But if you need something a little less permanent, spade connectors. We have a male and a female connector which fit together uh, like so. You crimp those onto the ends of your wires and you, you look like you know what you're doing. And have you ever come across something like this where the wires have been stripped, focus, and just crushed underneath a screw to hold them in place? Well, time and temperature will cause those wires to move and flex and eventually come loose, which can definitely lead to a hazard. In that case, something like the solder stick ring connectors are just what the doctor ordered. Crimp these guys on your wire. They have them for all different size wires. Heat them up. This heat shrink will shrink down, giving you a nice insulated connection to your wire that you can then put underneath that screw and have a nice professional looking solution. Solder stick. You can see their website right there. www.solderstick.com Check them out. See if they have a project or a product that works for you.